Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is reading the New Testament, 66 six days. We're on day 13. Today we'll be reading Mark 11 through 13. So, let's get started. Mark chapter 11, verse 1. And when they came nigh to Jerusalem unto Bethphage and Bethany at the Mount of Olives, he sendeth forth two of his disciples, and saith unto them, Go your way into the village over against you, and as soon as ye be entered into it, ye shall find a colt tied, whereon never man sat. Loose him, and bring him. And if any man say unto you, Why do ye this? Say ye that the Lord hath need of him, and straightway ye will send him hither. And they went their way, and found the colt tied by the door without in a place where two ways met. And they loose him, and certain of them that stood there said unto them, What do ye loose in the colt? And they say unto them, even as Jesus had commanded, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus, and cast their garments on him, and he sat upon him. And many spread their garments in the way, and others cut down branches off the trees, and strawed them in the way. And they that went before, and they that followed, cried, saying, Hosanna! Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Blessed be the kingdom of our father David, that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest! And Jesus entered into the Jerusalem and into the temple and when he had looked round about upon all things and now the eventide was come and he went out unto Bethany with the twelve and on the morrow when he were come from Bethany he was hungry and seeing a fig tree afar off having leaves he came if haply he might find anything thereon and when he came to it he found nothing but leaves for the time of figs was not yet Jesus answered and said unto it, No man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And his disciples heard it. And they come to the temple, or come to Jerusalem, and Jesus went into the temple, and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and would not suffer any that man should carry any vessel through the temple. And he taught and saying unto them, is it not written, My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer, but ye have made it a den of thieves? And the scribes and the chief priests heard it, and sought how they might destroy him, for they feared him, because all the people was astonished at his doctrine. And when even was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter, calling to remembrance, saith unto him, Master, Behold, the fig tree which thou cursest is wither away. And Jesus answering, saith unto them, Have faith in God. I love this simple verse. This is Christ our Lord talking here. Christ says this. See, it's in red. Have faith in God. It's so simple. Sometimes it can be hard to do. I, I, yeah. I'm not going to pretend that it's it's always easy, but we need to stay determined and keep this in our mind to always have faith in God. Always. Continuing on. For verily I say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. Another great verse um, that I'd probably use for a prayer Bible study. Because when we pray, we need to believe. And Christ says here, shall not doubt in his heart. No doubting. Believing. Right? It says believe. Believe with all your heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not unto thine own understanding. Proverbs 3.5. Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now when ye stand praying, forgive, if ye have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses. But if ye do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive your trespasses. And they come again to Jerusalem, and as he was walking in the temple, there come to him chief priests and the scribes and the elders, and say unto him, By what authority doest thou these things? And who gave thee this authority to do these things? And Jesus answered and said unto them, I will also 
ask of you one question, and answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? Answer me. And they reasoned with themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say, Why then did you not believe him? But if we shall say of men, they feared the people, for all the men counted John that he was a prophet indeed. And they answered and said unto Jesus, We cannot tell. And Jesus answering saith unto them, Neither do I tell you but what authority I do these things. Mark 12. And he began to speak unto them by parables. A certain man planted a vineyard and set a hedge about it, and digged a place for the wine fat, and built a tower, and let it out to husbandmen, and went into a far country. And at the season he sent to the husbandmen a servant that he might receive from the husbandmen of the fruit of the vineyard. And they caught him, and beat him, and sent him away empty. And again he sent unto them another servant. And at him they cast stones, and wounded him in the head, and sent him away shamefully handled. And again he sent another, and him they killed, and many others, beating some and killing some. Having yet therefore one son, he, his well-beloved, he sent him also last unto them, saying, They will reverence my son. But those husbandmen said among themselves, This is the heir, come, let us kill him, and the inheritance shall be ours. And they took him, and killed him, and cast him out to the vineyard. What shall therefore the lord of the vineyard do? He will come and destroy the husbandmen, and give the vineyard unto others. And have you not read this scripture, the stone which the builders rejected is become the head of the corner? This was the Lord's doing, and it was marvelous in our eyes. And they sought to lay hold on him, but feared the people, for they knew that he had spoken the parable against them. And they left him and went their way. And they send unto him, searching the Pharisees and the Herodians, to catch him in his words. And when they were come, they said unto him, Master, we know that thou art true, and carest for no man, for thou regards not the person of men, but teachest the way of God in truth. Is it lawful to give tribute to Caesar, or not? Shall we give, or shall we not give? But he, knowing their hypocrisy, said unto them, Why tempt ye me? Bring me a penny, that I may see it. And they brought it, and he saith unto them, Whose is this image and superscription? And they said unto him, Caesar's. Jesus answering said unto them, Render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. And they marveled at him. Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take it, his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. The second took her, and died, neither left he any seed. And the third likewise, and the seven had her, and left no seed. Last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. And as touching the dead that they rise, have ye not read in the book of Moses how in the bush God spake unto him, saying, I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob? He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together, and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, Which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And a great commandment at that. Love the Lord your God with all your heart soul, mind. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God, and there is none other but he. And to love him with all the heart, and with all the understanding, with all the soul, and with all the strength, to love his neighbor as himself, is more than the whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. 
And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst ask him any question. And Jesus answered and said, while he taught in the temple, How say the scribes that Christ is the son of David? For David himself said by the Holy Ghost, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit thou on my right hand, till I make thine enemies thy footstool. David therefore himself calleth him Lord, and went to see then his son. And the common people heard him gladly. And he said unto them in this his doctrine, Beware of the scribes, which love to go in long clothing, and love salutations in the marketplace, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and the uppermost rooms at feasts, which devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayers. These shall receive greater damnation. And Jesus sat over against the treasury, and beheld how the people cast money into the treasury, and many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples, and saith unto them, Verily I say unto you, that this poor widow hath cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury. For all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had, even all her living. In Mark 13. And as he went out of the temple, one of his disciples saith unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. And Jesus answering said unto him, Seest thou these great buildings? There shall not be left one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives over against the temple, Peter and James and John and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us what shall these things be, and what shall be the sign of these things shall be fulfilled? And Jesus answering them began to say, Take heed, lest any man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. And when ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, be ye not troubled, for such things must needs be. But the end shall not be yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be earthquakes in diverse places, and there shall be famines and troubles. These are the beginning of sorrows. But take heed to yourselves, for they shall deliver you up to councils, and in the synagogue ye shall be beaten, and ye shall be brought before rulers and kings for my sake, for a testimony against them. And the gospel must first be published among all nations. And when they shall lead you and deliver you up, take no thought beforehand what ye shall speak. Neither do ye premeditate, but whatsoever shall be given you in that hour, that speak ye, for it is not ye that speak, but the Holy Ghost. Now the brother shall betray the brother to death, and the father the son, and the children shall rise up against their parents, and shall cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake, but he that shall endure unto the end, the same shall be saved. But when ye shall see the abomination of desolation, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, let him that readeth understand, then let him them that be in Judea flee into the mountains, and let him that is on the housetop not go down into the house, neither enter therein to take anything out of his house. Let him that is in the field not turn back again to take up his garment, but woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days. And pray ye that your flight be not in winter, for in those days shall be affliction, and such as was not from the beginning of the creation which God created unto this time, neither shall be. And except that the Lord had shortened those days, no flesh should be saved. But for the elect's sake, whom he hath chosen, he hath shortened the days. And then if any man shall say to you, Lo, here is Christ, or lo, he is there, believe him not. For false Christs and false prophets shall rise, and shall show signs and wonders to seduce, if it were possible, even the elect. But take ye heed, behold, I have foretold you all things. But in those days after that tribulation the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars of heaven shall fall, and the powers that are in heaven shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. And then shall he send his angels, and shall gather together his elect from the four winds of the uttermost part of the earth to the uttermost part of heaven. Now learn ye a parable of the fig tree, when her branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves. Ye know that summer is near. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall not pass away, but my words 
shall not pass away. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. Take ye heed, watch, and pray, for ye know not when the time is. For the Son of Man is as a man taking a far journey, who left this house, and gave authority to his servants, and to every man his work, and commanded the porter to watch. Watch ye therefore, for ye know not when the master of the house cometh, at even, or at midnight, or at the cock crowing, or in the morning, lest coming suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say unto you, I say unto all, watch. Yep, we don't know when Christ comes back, when Christ is going to come back. We don't know. We need to watch. And there's other verses that say, be sober, be vigilant. Right? Be sober, be vigilant, and watch. We know not when our master, Christ Jesus, is going to come back. So, all the more reason to be living for the Lord and not for ourselves, not for flesh and blood, not for the earthly, but for the heavenly. Not gathering treasures upon earth, but putting up treasures in heaven, like the Bible says. Because our time on this earth is short. We're not guaranteed tomorrow at all. We never know when our time is up, but we need to make the most out of our time, the time that's been given to us. It's not our time, actually. It's time that has been given to us by God, just like our lives. And so we need to make the most of it. Why toil and struggle? Why should we toil and struggle for physical things when we're just going to lose it? We can't take anything with us when we die. So we need to be putting up heavenly things, heavenly treasures, instead of earthly treasures, and living for God and watching. So anyway, that's going to be it for today's Bible reading. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you guys have a great evening, morning, or noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in Him, trust in Him, and wait upon Him, and you'll never be sorry. God willing, we'll see you tomorrow. I always like to say that, God willing, because I don't know if I'll see you tomorrow. I don't know if I'll be able to read the Bible tomorrow. But that's why I say God willing, because if it if it's God's will, then I will. So thanks again. Take care and God bless.